Hey everyone, welcome to Hunters Connect. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to European mount a pronghorn antelope. Now you might have already seen our how to European mount a deer skull. And that's kind of a more in-depth look on the whole European mount process. In this video, I'm kind of gonna focus more on what makes pronghorn different when it comes to the whole European mounting process. So pronghorn don't have antlers, they have horns. And what makes them unique is that they shed these horns each year. So their skull actually has a bone that continues up from the top of their head up into this horn. And we'll refer to this horn here as a sheath. And when it sheds, it pops off and the new one's already beginning to grow underneath it. So when it comes to doing European mounts on pronghorn, when, it, when you're cleaning the skull, you actually need to remove these sheaths to clean off the membrane on top of the, 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 the skull here that sits underneath the horn. This is all gonna make a lot more sense once uh, we jump into the demonstration. Like I mentioned, in this video, we're gonna kinda keep it a little more short and sweet and focus just on the, di on the difference of pronghorn compared to deer. But if you wanna see a really good in-depth look on the whole process itself, make sure to go watch our deer European mountain video and I'll cover everything from what type of boiler to use and the different types of bleaches for bleaching the skull. So hope you guys find this video helpful and let's get into it. So my pronghorn here has already been skinned out. I still have the eyes intact and a little bit of meat on the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pry those eyes out and take off a little bit of that meat still on the back of the head. But if your pronghorn still has the hide and all the meat on it, you're gonna to wanna to take that hide off and take as much meat off as possible. And then you can go ahead and begin the Euro mount process. What you wanna do first is just soak it. So right now I got the water, the burner turned on, but it's not at a simmer yet. During the Euro process, you don't, it's, people will refer to it as the boiling method, but you really don't ever wanna boil the water. You just wanna keep it at a low simmer. The boil, if you boil it too hot, it can make the bones brittle and it could damage the skull. So you just wanna simmer it. But first what we're gonna do here with the, the pronghorn is we're basically just gonna get it in that water and once the water gets warm and starts to simmer a little bit, maybe 10, 15 minutes, I'll wanna pull it back out. And those horns are basically, I'll show you when it's time for it, but those horns are gonna pop off and then you could set the horns aside and now you just have a skull to boil just like regular. And then from there, you'll put it back in the water to let it soak and simmer in the water and then for an hour or so, and then you can start picking that meat off. And then in the end, once you have your skull cleaned and whitened, then that's when you're gonna to wanna to attach those, uh, those horns back on. Okay, so now this pronghorn has had some time to soak in this almost simmering water for probably 15 to 20 minutes now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out and we're gonna go ahead and try to get those uh, prongs pried off the skull. And this right here is basically the only difference between doing like a deer or elk skull or any other antlered game, um, these pronghorns just have this sheath here that we're gonna want to try to get off. But right there, all I did was kind of give it uh, pulled up and twist. The twisting is really what's going to help pop it off. And now we'll do the other side. There they go. So the prongs are now off. And now from here, you're going to see it has this weird little film, um, this membrane over the, over the skull here. And this is where the new prong is actually beginning to grow. You can see all this hair in here. And what all we're really gonna do here is go ahead and cut it off. Kind of put a slice in there. And then 
try to give it a pry it off. There it comes. I need to kind of come around and break it off the bottom. So now that we have those sheaths taken off of the skull here, we're just left with a completely hard skull left with the pronghorn here. So now you can totally submerge this thing back in there and you'll be good to go. So this water has been simmering with these heads in it for about an hour now. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this pronghorn out and what I'm going to do is Usually if you have like a, an outdoor setting or like some somewhere that you're comfortable with doing this, you can go ahead and initially pull that skull out and give it a good shake and a lot of stuff's going to fall right off. Um, I'm inside of a shop here so I have a trash can that I have set up that I'm going to kind of do my initial shake on. Then I'm going to bring it over to a little uh, bench space with a tarp that I put over it just to kind of keep things as clean as possible. Um, so yeah. You're going to want to be careful. This is, of course, very hot water. And even that skull is kind of going to be hot to the touch at first when you pull it out. So it might be a good idea to not completely manhandle it with your hands right out of the hot water because you could get burned. So I'm going to use these tongs I, or these pliers I got here. To, this antelope head is like pretty much submerged all the way under the water. So that's why I'm using it. Otherwise, you can grab the antlers like on this deer here. But I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to kind of test the waters here. It's not that hot, I guess. And it's definitely warm. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to do that. Bring this trash can over. Put that down. And give it a couple shakes. We've got some meat flying off for sure. But that's probably as much as we're going to give it right there. Now we're going to take it over to the bench and just start doing some work. Another really um, helpful tip that if you have one or if you can use one somehow, a pressure washer is going to do wonders. If you can get this thing just laid out on the ground, get a really high pressure hose on it, it's going to blow a lot of this debris out and basically make this way easier than manually prying the meat off. But for the sake of this video, I don't have a pressure washer, so we're going to be scraping it. But just know, if you have a pressure washer, utilize one, because they'll be your best friend in this process. So as you guys can see, after a few times of pulling the pronghorn skull out of the water, scraping it down, putting it back in, it just took a couple more soaks to get the, the rest of the back of the head to, be, to clean up. So it's at a point now where I'm happy with it, and now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go get some supplies that we'll want to use to bleach the skull. You don't have to bleach the skull if you wanted to. You could kind of leave it more at this, I guess what you'd call more of a natural look. No bleach and I think that looks kind of cool as well. But you can go ahead and put the horns back on and what you could do is you could put like an epoxy in there and glue them in or you could just leave them loose like this if you're setting it on a shelf or hanging it I mean they'll stay on so I'll go ahead and take it to the next step I'll go ahead and bleach this skull and then get these horns glued back on just so you can see that option being done and then we're dang near finished okay so now we have our pronghorn skull completely rid of all the meat that was on it and now we're ready for the next step so this again is where things are a little bit different than your deer because obviously you can see the deer, the pronghorn skull comes all the way up and these are where his horns sit. The sheaths come down here on top of the skull like that. So really all we're going to do is we're going to continue this process like we would a deer skull. We're going to go ahead and whiten it and then I'll show you how that I, how I like to 
glue those horns back on the pronghorn skull. So here we go. So it is now the next morning after we applied the bleach to the skull. Um, I went ahead and let it kind of soak in. I wiped it all off. And I probably will run another uh, coat of that bleaching on it. But um, I just wanted to go ahead and get these uh, horns back on so we can show you how that's done. Um, also, by um, waiting a day helps dry out these horns here, these sheaths, because they were obviously in um, that water for a while yesterday, at least like up to, I don't know, not the whole thing, but the bases were underwater. So it's good to help those dry before you put the glue on as well. Okay, so what I'm using for my glue is, uh, it's a, actually an epoxy. Really any glue should pretty much do the trick, but I just have this um, two, part epoxy that I'm going to use and that should do it. So what we're going to do is go ahead and I'm going to apply some inside and then you can go ahead and put some on here too. I mean, just anywhere that's going to contact. So that way it'll get a good seal. So like I'm going to run glue on these front and back sides. That seems to be where they, it gets the most contact in my opinion. But maybe each skull is different, so just kind of use your best judgment. I'm trying not to get it to the outside. It's probably be best to just kind of keep it on the interior here. Feels like it has definite contact. And we'll go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. So that's 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 about it, guys. It's pretty simple, like I mentioned. It's really almost identical to other game animals like deer and elk, except the fact that you gotta pop these sheaths off to clean off those, those horns on the, on the inside of the skull. So if you wanna see a more in-depth look on how to do European mounts, go ahead and watch our deer skull cleaning method. And in that video, I kinda go over everything we did in this video, but just in more detail. So. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, please be sure to let us know and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching Hunters Connect.